You are listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. What's going on, Chiefs Kingdom? I'm BJ Kissel. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of it's basically it's called 10 things but it's going to be 12 things today presented by our friends at kc strength and conditioning if you know someone in the kansas city area who needs baseball or softball training ages 8 to 18 call my friend john renzi at 913-638-8960 that's kc strength and conditioning at 913-638-8960 i've known john for more than 20 years we played baseball together growing up and despite the fact that he sent hundreds of kids to college and the professional uh, baseball ranks. Uh, John has always been that guy uh, that's been fitness, what a body needs to maximize its performance out on a baseball field. So if you've got a youth uh, athlete that you know of, whether it's one of your kids or somebody else's, uh, recommend uh, KC Strength and Conditioning. Go up there, take a tour, talk with John, and see if it's a good fit for you. Uh, it's been um, It's been great working with them, and they do phenomenal work. But this show, uh, 10 Things. 12 things today. It's about information, stats, records, nuggets, and fun things to help you look smarter to your friends following the Chiefs 30 to 24 win over the Houston Texans on Sunday. Now, this show and this information is going to sway towards the positives. I'm just giving you a heads up now. So if you're angry about the win, you're listening to this show, not gonna be bothered uh, if you if you turn this off, if you just if you're not quite there yet. But if you want some more analysis and, and some more thoughts on uh, what happened yesterday, we've got plenty of other shows. This show is about hard information and some of those paces and records that were broken. Uh, and so again, not a lot of uh, opinion necessarily from this show. So with that said, here are 10 things from Sunday's win over the Houston Texans to help you become a smarter Chiefs fan and look smarter to your friends. And once again, it's our attempt to not, normalize the greatness we're watching here in the golden age of chiefs football that is uh cannot be argued uh it's never been better and here's some more context to prove it starting with number one the chiefs clinch the seventh consecutive afc west title with that victory personally i celebrated more after the chargers win a few weeks ago because in my mind that's where the uh afc west division title was won but it happened officially yesterday in the 30 to 24 win over houston uh chief secured again that seventh consecutive division championship from 2016 all the way this season it tied the los angeles rams that were in nfc west between 1973 and 1979 for the second longest streak of con Executive division title since the AFL NFL merger back in 1970. Only in this, not a surprise to anybody who's been watching football for the last 15 years or so. Only the New England Patriots streak of 11 consecutive AFC East titles from 2009 to 2019 sits higher in NFL history. So the Chiefs would need to win what five more consecutive uh, division titles. Uh, to have the NFL's all-time record. But for right now, let's just enjoy that it's not only uh, an AFC West record, it's in one of the best streaks in NFL history, one of the most dominant streaks in NFL history uh, within a division, which is Andy Reid's goal for the Chiefs every single season. And it means a little bit more this year because of the Tyreek Hill trade and the way that everybody talked about that. And this was going to be a down year for the Chiefs and for Seemingly the seventh straight year, a lot of national media picked the LA Chargers uh, to win the division and couldn't do it, couldn't overcome, couldn't surpass the Chiefs who did it again. So let's not normalize that either, that there was a time since I've been creating Chiefs content starting back in 2009 in which I would have absolutely loved uh, to win even one division title and to kind of threaten that and be relevant in that way. And not only are the Chiefs relevant, they're doing things that very few teams in NFL history over the course of half decade, uh, more than half decade have done. So let's not, let's not gloss over that. Uh, let's, let's appreciate these things as they happen as well. But number two, the chiefs pull out the overtime win on Jarek McKinnon's touchdown. The chiefs won the game in overtime, marking the club's second overtime game and overtime victory of the 2022 season in franchise history. The chiefs have now played in 44 regular season overtime contests going 21, 21 and two. In those games, a perfect 500 record. And Jarek McKinnon ran the ball for 26 yards for the game-winning touchdown, in which after the game, it was reported that he called his shot. In the huddle, said that uh, he was taking that one in for the score, and that's exactly what happened. And those are the kinds of things that absolutely get your teammates fired up. Uh, and that was after Willie Gay had recovered the fumble that Frank Clark had forced on the Texans' uh, possession uh, there in overtime. That would have been a 
win the game possession. Even a field goal right there would have won it. So huge play from Frank Clark and obviously Willie Gay to hop on it. And then the Chiefs offense uh, did the rest. Number three, Chiefs marched 97 yards down the field for points. In Sunday's game against the Texans, Patrick Mahomes led the Chiefs offense to the end zone after starting the drive on Kansas City's own three-yard line. For you mathletes out there, that's how they got 97 yards. Started on their own three, and that's when the end of that drive is when Mahomes found Marquez Valdez-Scantling for a four-yard touchdown to cap the 13-play, 97-yard drive. And it marked the first time since a 26-23 victory over the Vikings on November 3rd, 2019. Back, that was a Matt Moore game. If you remember that one, that was uh, Harrison Butker drilling uh, a field goal in the snow against the wind. I was on the sideline for that game. I remember that one very, very well. Uh, Huge game. Sorry for the little tangent there about that one. But uh, that was the first time since that game against the Vikings a few years ago. The Chiefs scored a touchdown on a drive of 97 yards or more. So pretty special right there. And personally, I think that was the biggest play that Marquez Valdez Scantling has made in a Chiefs uniform. Uh, That was at a time that the Chiefs offense didn't look great uh, for a team to put up more than 500 yards. Uh, of offense to say that in that moment, uh, if he hadn't have caught that, I think uh, going into halftime would have felt a lot differently. Uh, Chiefs obviously figured out in the second half, did enough to win the game, but a huge play there from Marquez Valdez Gantling. And it's a uh, reason they brought him over. Uh, it always seems that he, he drops the easy ones and catches the crazy hard ones. So uh, that'll just be up to Patrick Mahomes to never throw him an accurate pass. Uh, m- moving on to number four, Chiefs rec- record. 502 net yards of offense, like I mentioned earlier, in that game against the Texans on Sunday. It's the third time this season the Chiefs have recorded 500 or more net yards of total offense, and it marks the 19th consecutive game that the Chiefs have recorded 300 or more net yards of offense, setting a new franchise record. Again, I'll repeat that. 19 straight games with at least 300 yards of offense is a new franchise record, surpassing uh, the 18 straight games that the Chiefs had recorded 300 more yards back in 2017 into 2018. It's a little Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes there. Uh, Pretty special, but it was also the ninth game of the 2022 season where the Chiefs totaled at least 400 yards of net offense, tying for the third month most such performances in a single season in franchise history. And it's the second game of this season that the Chiefs have had 500 or more net yards. And it's the 35th such performance in team history of having at least 500 yards or more. The Chiefs are 2-0, and not surprising, in such games this season and they have where they have at least 500 yards of total offense. And they have a 27-8 overall record in the regular season. Uh, with games with 500 or more yards of total offense. Crazy numbers right there. And again, not normalizing the fact that, uh, yeah, 19 straight games with at least 300 yards of total offense. Uh, pretty special. Pretty good. All right. they If the Chiefs can gain at least 400 yards of total offense over the next four in their games against the Seahawks, the Broncos, and then the Raiders, they will have the franchise record for most 400-yard offensive performances in a single season reason I bring that up as well is pretty special for an offense that was going to take a step back that wasn't going to be as explosive that wasn't going to be able to um, operate at the efficiency and the level that we've seen under Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes after the last few years uh, with some different personnel on the outside Um, pretty special if they do it Uh, especially again like I just said after a season which wasn't supposed to happen number five Patrick Mahomes joins elite company again. Patrick Mahomes completed 36 of 41 passes for 336 yards and two touchdowns on Sunday. That was good for a 117.1 passer rating. And with two touchdowns in that game, Mahomes now owns 35 passing scores in 2022, becoming the fifth quarterback in NFL history with four or more seasons of at least 35 touchdown passes in their career. Joining Tom Brady, who had six, Aaron Rodgers, who also had six, Drew Brees, who had four, and Hall of Fame quarterback Peyton Manning, who also had four. Again, this is another one of those that needs context. It's not a consecutive streak. It's just total. Patrick Mahomes, four seasons of at least 35 touchdown passes. He is now only two seasons behind uh, Tom Brady for the most 35-yard touchdown, or excuse me, 35 or more touchdown passes in a season from tying that record three seasons away from breaking it. So seemingly if he stays healthy and has at least 35 touchdowns over the next three years, pardon me, 
overcoming a little bit of a cold right now, everyone. I apologize for those listening, but long story short, Patrick Mahomes at the age of 30, he's 27 right now at the age of 30 could have the most 35 touchdown pass seasons in NFL history, surpassing Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Again, absolutely bonkers numbers considering what Peyton Manning, the Tom Brady is how old. And if Patrick Mahomes keeps playing till he's 45 years old, we're just said Patrick Mahomes may have the most 35 or more touchdown pass seasons in NFL history at the age of 30. And if he plays as long as Tom Brady, he would have 15 more seasons. What more proof do you need that this is the best start for anyone who's not on this train already, that it's the best start to any quarterback's career, or even any player's career in NFL history. These are the things, and I'm figuring some of this stuff out as we're recording as it's hitting me how banana sandwich a lot of this stuff is. Um, anyway, Patrick Holmes, 35 touchdown passes in 2022, already ranks as the fourth most in franchise history and now owns the top four spots in franchise history as far as most touchdown passes in a season, which is, is kind of crazy. Um, I thought... Trent Green and it would it would have one up there, but the top four: Patrick Mahomes, fifty in twenty eighteen, thirty eight in twenty twenty, thirty seven in twenty twenty one, thirty five here already in twenty twenty two, and then number five is actually Len Dawson who had thirty touchdown passes in nineteen sixty four. So, uh, just off the top of my head, a little surprising that uh, some of those mid two thousands Chiefs teams uh, with Trent Green didn't have at least thirty touchdown passes. But again, Patrick Mahomes just absolutely dominating. Uh, every statistical category in Chiefs history and NFL history, and it's going to continue that for sure. Number six, more Patrick Mahomes stuff. His 36 completions on 41 attempts on Sunday was good for an 87.8% completion percentage, setting a new franchise record for highest completion percentage in a single game in franchise history, passing Alex Smith's previous mark of 86.36 set at Oakland on October 16th, 2016. I was at that game and I remember that, remember that one as well. And Alex Smith holds the other top four positions for highest completion percentage and a lot of uh, probably unfairly uh, used against Alex Smith, uh, especially what we saw from him in his last season starting for the chiefs. Uh, but a lot of safe passes underneath a lot of checking down, a lot of throwing to the open guy is what I would have said, reading the defense, getting it to your playmakers. Uh, but the fact that a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, who we know likes to test things uh, and uh, push the ball down the field, all that kind of stuff uh, for him to set that kind of record and have the highest completion percentage is just that much more special. All right, moving on to number seven. Shocker, another Patrick Mahomes one. He made his 77th career start on Sunday, tying Bill Kenny, who was the Chiefs quarterback between 1979 and 1988 for the third most starts by a quarterback in a Chiefs uniform in franchise history. Again, Patrick Mahomes is 27 years old. And now Mahomes only trails Trent Green, who had 88 starts in his Chiefs career and Pro Football Hall of Fame quarterback Len Dawson, who had 158 for the most starts by a quarterback in team history. So he's got a ways to go to pass Len, Len Dawson. He stays healthy. He'll pass Trent Green in the middle of the 2023 season. And Len Dawson, uh, further down the road, uh, that will be a, a special, special one. And quick side note, I will never forget the late, great Len Dawson. I was fortunate enough to be able to sit in the studio uh, when uh, the GOAT of Chiefs broadcasters, Mitch Holtis, got to interview uh, Len Dawson and Patrick Mahomes watching film of each other and breaking it down. You can find that uh, searching on YouTube or go through the Chiefs YouTube channel. You can find that interview in that moment. But I think everybody that was in that room knew how special that was uh, because, you know, those not everybody's around forever. Uh, and Len was getting older and you know how many times these guys were going to have the opportunity to sit down and, and just appreciate football together. And just as a diehard Chiefs fan growing up to sit in that room with uh, – an absolute legend in Lynn Dawson and then a young legend in waiting and growing at that point. Uh, it was just a surreal moment that I'll never forget. One of my most grateful moments I had uh, working for the chiefs, but um, let's move on to number eight. Another Patrick Mahomes one. Uh, this is the last one for Patrick Mahomes. We've got five, four more after this, but Patrick Mahomes set a new franchise record for most rushing touchdowns as Mahomes scored on a five yard rush in the fourth quarter of Sunday's game to help the chiefs get that victory. It gave uh, Mahomes a single season career high of three rushing touchdowns 
uh, and gives him 11 career rushing touchdowns in a Chiefs uniform, breaking a tie with Alex Smith for the most rushing touchdowns by a Chiefs quarterback in franchise history. Again, Patrick Mahomes now with 11. Alex Smith had 10. Len Dawson had nine. Mike Livingston had seven. And then both Pete Bettered and Rich Gannon had six during their respective years with the Chiefs. Let's move on to number nine. Travis Kelsey passes Shannon Sharp on the all time list. Again, another one of those special things, another one of those greatest of all time. I mean, the Chief, it not normalizing the fact that we have the greatest tight end in NFL history, the greatest quarterback in NFL history, and one of the three or four best coaches in NFL history in their primes at the same time leading our team in our community. It is absolutely special, but Kelsey passes Shannon Sharp with his 105 yards receiving on Sunday. Kelsey now owns 10,150 career receiving yards, passing the former pro or excuse me, passing the former tight end and pro football hall of famer, Shannon Sharp for the fourth most receiving yards by a tight end in NFL history. Kelsey finished the game as the chiefs leading receiver with 105 yards on 10 catches. And it marks his 34th game of recording a hundred or more receiving yards in four in his career. So yeah, Travis Kelsey now only looking up at three other tight ends uh, on the NFL's all time list for receiving yards. That would be Antonio Gates. Who's got about 1700 more yards. So it's going to take basically one more season uh, with Travis Kelsey, having three more in the regular season this year, and then having another good season. He stays healthy. He will potentially move into third place. Uh, and then Jason Witten and Tony Gonzalez are going to take a few more seasons. Hopefully Travis Kelsey plays uh, for a very, very long time. But as we've seen with Kelsey and uh, their new podcast with his brother, Jason, a uh, success that new Heights is having uh, and not to a surprise to anybody, Travis Kelsey is going to be very successful in his life after football, doing media stuff and probably make more money after football than he will playing football as Maybe he gets another Super Bowl, maybe another two Super Bowls. At what point uh, does he stop playing? Don't want to talk about it, but just throwing out there when we're looking at some of the, the context of chasing some of these these tight ends that played longer uh, than he has, uh, how long is he going to continue playing will determine how close he gets to breaking the all-time records and obviously health as well. All right, let's move on to number 10, back to Jarek McKinnon. Uh, he finished the Chiefs' third possession of the game on Sunday with a 20-yard touchdown reception from Patrick Mahomes. They got a little ghost action on that play with Kadarius Toney. It was great to see him back in the game, uh, to see that part of the playbook for the Chiefs open back up that we haven't really seen since McCole Hardman and Kadarius Toney uh, have been out. That's That ghost action is where Kadarius Toney runs and basically motions behind the running back uh, before the snap. You know, the jet action is when they run right behind the quarterback. Sometimes Mahomes will hand it off to him. The ghost action is when he's behind the running back. We see Tyreek Hill run back and forth all the time doing that. Uh, just to confuse the defense and their rules as far as coverages when they're in zone and different things that they do. Uh, but it was great to see Jarek McKinnon get in the end zone again. The guy is just a touchdown machine lately. And it marks McKinnon's fifth receiving touchdown of the season and 12th touchdown of the season uh, in general just to seal the overtime victory that the touchdown he got uh, right there. And McC McKinnon finished the game with 52 rushing yards on 10 carries with one touchdown on the ground and then 70 yards on eight receptions with one receiving touchdown. To give a lot of credit to Jarek McKinnon and, and Patrick Mahomes for that passing game, but you've got to shout out the Chiefs offensive line, particularly those three interior guys with Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, and Trey Smith. The Chiefs are the best screen team in the NFL. Uh, former Chief and uh, friend of the network, he's been on a couple times, Jeff Schwartz, uh, has talked about it. I think he talked about it last week, kind of breaking down how good Andy Reid and the screen game is for the Chiefs. Not a surprise, uh, but they are absolutely finding their stride with the screen game lately uh, with Jarek McKinnon. Again, more than 100 yards of uh, offense from scrimmage over the last two weeks when he was really needed uh, to win some football games. So uh, let's move on to number 11. Marquez Valdez-Scantling scores his six points in that game uh, on Sunday in their 34 30 to 24 victory over the Texans. He stretched out in the second quarter. Uh, the four yard reception and that touchdown put points on the board before heading into the half. Uh, Valdez Scantling finished the game on Sunday with 26 yards on three receptions and one touchdown. Not lighting up the stat sheet, but uh, you could argue that it was the the non-game changing late in the game, biggest play of the game. I know the Frank Clark strip. I know the Patrick Mahomes, all the touchdown scores were the biggest plays in the game. But if you're talking from a momentum and just an emotional standpoint for Chiefs fans, 
go back and watch that game or put yourself back in that moment. If Marquez doesn't stretch out and catch that ball and they have to attempt a field goal or anything else going into half, how would you have felt? Um, that touchdown really kind of put everybody at ease. It did for me uh, in that moment. So a uh, huge play right there from MVS. We talked about that earlier in the show. And finally, number 12, Frank Clark records his fifth sack of the season, the four yard sack of Texans quarterback dress, Jeff Driscoll. Uh, was a quarterback on that play in the game's first quarter. Clark now has five sacks on the season and 58 and a half sacks in his career. And then in overtime, the play that everybody remembers Clark stripped the ball out of Davis mills, the other quarterback that was running around back there for the Texans. And that allowed Willie Gay to recover the ball, which ultimately led to Jarek McKinnon running the ball in for a touchdown in the chiefs victory. Clark finished Sunday's game with five tackles, three of which were solo one sack for a loss of four yards and one forced fumble. It's getting close to the end of the year. It's getting close to playoff season. So, you know, Frank Clark is going to make plays in the playoffs when it counts. I have been a Frank Clark defender the entire time. So if that set you off, I am sorry, but you're talking about a player that may not have the overall production that people expected when that contract was given out, the resources that were given out to trade for him. But this is a player who is in the top five in NFL history and postseason sacks. Frank Clark had a sack in the final four minutes of every playoff win the Chiefs had on the way to the Super Bowl, including the Super Bowl when he brought down Jimmy Garoppolo to seal that victory. So Frank Clark making a big play in a big moment is not a unique thing, even though I understand that people want more production out of him for the contract that he's getting. The contract he's getting is based on what the market had set. I was great. I was very happy to see that he came back this season and his impact has absolutely been needed uh, on the defensive side, not just for helping George Karloftis and some of the young guys, Mike Dana. Um, obviously I saw his impact with Chris Jones when uh, he first got here to kind of uh, show that leadership and show the way to, to prepare and the way to fight through things uh, for Chris. And both those guys have talked about it, uh, but huge to see Frank Clark step up in a big moment there. Hopefully uh, continue to see that hopefully not against the, the bad teams uh like the texans but a win is a win chiefs kingdom that is uh our we'll say 12 things uh for this basically a patrick mahomes not normalizing greatness show this week but uh again i said this earlier uh go and check out my conversation with matt miller on kcs and update earlier today but uh, i felt weird I'll, I'll end the show with this i felt weird waking up this morning that i was disappointed last night after the game that it hasn't been easier for the Chiefs to go 11 and three and what was supposed to be a bounce back season, a, you know, a, a reset, if you will. A lot of young guys going to be playing, especially on the defense, all the stuff that we talked about in the draft. Excited about the players they brought in, but thought there was going to be a lot more younger mistakes that was going to lead to more losses. Haven't led to a lot of losses. Obviously, the Chiefs still tied with the Bills for the top record in the AFC and still have a chance at that number one seed. Just need the Bills to drop one of their next three games. But it was weird for me to wake up feeling disappointed that it hasn't been easier for the chiefs to be dominant and just run away with every game that they play and go win the super bowl easily that's not the way the nfl works that's not the way anything special has ever been won it's never been easy uh for anyone and it was not easy back in 2019 we all celebrate the super bowl we remember it fondly there were points in that season in which you felt the same way that you did having to eke out a victory over the Houston Texans. There have been ebbs and flows of every NFL season, and the Chiefs need to get get some things right for sure um, on the defensive side of the ball specifically uh, and clean up some things offensively. Hopefully they get McCall Hardman back. That's been reported by Adam Schefter that he'll be back this Saturday against the Seattle Seahawks. It'll be great to get him back, get some other guys uh, back in the mix, get Kadarius Tony back in the mix. He's been out a little bit with his injury, but uh, – it's important that they they get things going and they're playing their best football towards the end of the year. But again, as far as not normalizing greatness and not being uh, getting caught up in the entitlement of expecting and and feeling like the Chiefs should be absolutely dominating everybody and they're going to not win anything because they're not dominating. It's not necessarily the case. You're just protecting your emotions as Chiefs fans because we lived through for most of us that are watching this, unless you're really young and you don't know what it was like that we have the NFL record for most consecutive playoff losses in NFL history. So we are conditioned to think the worst and we need to overcome that and appreciate the golden age of chiefs football right now. That is me up on my high horse preaching at all of you uh, because I needed to hear that myself this morning when I woke up.
appreciate all you for hanging out, spending some time with us today. Check out all the other content that we've got on KC Sports Network. And don't miss the live laboratory with Craig, Maddie, and Kent tonight as they dissect this win over the Houston Texans live at 8 p.m. on the KCSN YouTube channel. Hit that like and subscribe. Follow us on your favorite podcast platform. We've got a lot more than just Chiefs content. So whatever platform you like to consume content, just search KCSN. You can find all of our stuff right there and leave a five-star review review if you're feeling uh, if you're feeling generous as we get ready for Christmas. Hope you all have a great pre-Christmas week uh, for everybody out there with kids. Spend time with your loved ones. Don't need to be reminded to uh, tell the folks around you uh, that you love them. And uh, yeah, we appreciate all of you and we'll see you next time.